The only real hope and change you'll ever get is from God. It's going to come from the Lord or it's not going to come at all. It's going to come when you admit that you can't do it and that you've got to have His help. I don't know if you've actually contemplated what would happen in America if they were trying to attempt to find terrorists. Let's just give an idea. Let's say 200,000 ISIS members were in the United States. No, let's just say 5,000. Let's give it a number of 5,000. 5,000 ISIS members in the United States. Let's say these guys are doing little things, little bombings and so forth. I'm telling you, with the increase in their activity in the United States, you're looking at civilian containment operations going into the first phase. So, civilian containment is to keep people indoors so that they can operate on the streets. Now, don't get paranoid when they do begin to lock down these exits and so forth. It is not nefarious in its beginnings. They will, in, honestly, attempt to hunt down these guys to find them. And you know what? It's, it's, it's good to note that most things begin with a good motive, but all too often they end up in the hands of folks who lose their minds in their operations. That's why I'm glad that Jesus is my Savior. I really am. You, know, you can't fight your way out of these situations. You can't. Who's threatening Rome? ISIS is directly threatening Rome. These things are taking place. Actually, it just started about, maybe about uh, six or seven hours ago, they began to do that. You guys hear an echo? Just you, Nisi. It's a little quiet. Ah, Nisi had two players running. Anyway, Rome has a lot of personnel, but here's the problem. It's one thing to have an army. It's another to fight an enemy who thinks in a much darker dimension than you do. There are some things that they are capable of that the Roman soldiers couldn't possibly, their defense ministry couldn't possibly conceive of because it's too dark. These guys are shrouded in darkness. Their plans are beyond Hollywood. It's just beyond Hollywood. There's no limitations in their actions. It's hard to be prepared for that, for any army. It's very hard to be prepared for that. That's why I'm glad that... Uh, you know, I know Jesus Christ is my personal Savior. If you are a good person at heart, you're not going to spend your days thinking about nefarious plans and totally plunge yourself in this darkness and understand how their thoughts are working. That's not going to happen. And so some of their evil things you won't quite see, but the Lord has your back. You're covered on all sides. Collectively, that covering broadens itself. You represent that uh, city or town that you live in, your neighborhood. You make a difference in where you live. You actually do make a difference now, unfortunately. There are some places that are, um, you know, they've, they've likely booted out all the believers. They've drawn specific types of people to them. Those places are likely targets. Where the Lord is absent, and I'm telling you, this is happening more and more every day. They're kicking them out, and you're going to see nothing but weird stuff follow where God is not. When mankind decides to turn its back on the Creator, how in the world can that place be protected? Has it not become a Sodom and Gomorrah in God's eyes? And so then the fate of Sodom and Gomorrah in these places, that's what's going to be their fate. Rome is a direct enemy of ISIS. Rome is declared a direct enemy of ISIS. Even above the West, that, that's a pretty bold statement. And you know what, again, there are a lot of people who have had preconceived notions of how this beast architecture would form and so forth. But when it does not come out the way they thought it would come out, don't beat yourselves up. We all have theories and everything else, okay? Just what we have to do is just move on. Take the information that we get and move on. Don't worry about making a wrong call in the future because we're just people. We'll have our ideas, and if they're proven wrong, just don't beat yourself up about it. There are people doing that already. They're saying, well, I just never could have imagined. Well, it's okay. Take what you've learned and go forward. Because many things will change. I'm convinced in my own soul that the beef system is not a conventional system. It's not your standard brick and mortar system. It's something else, something different, something unimaginable. Something that will cause people to worship. For a long time, civilization has been they're being set up psychologically prepared for an event, an unfolding event that will capture the hearts and minds of so many people. 
it is not conventional. Many people have uh, played their role in this thing, but it is not conventional. You know, a lot of people think that the Antichrist himself, that man of perdition, is just your average, ordinary person with influences over other people. What they don't understand, well, it's just like a, there's a scripture. There's a scripture that says in the book of Job that the sun's, plural, of the morning stars, plural, sons of the morning stars, indicating one, who's giving reference to something, something God absolutely made. The Lord did a great many things in this world, and he created his angels. Everybody has a hard time believing that the first ones fell. Listen, they are still here. They're active. They're operating. They're active and operating. They will be responsible for the, one of the greatest delusions mankind has ever been under. They are seductive in nature. They capture the imaginations of many people. They work in ways so a person can't understand that they're working in their lives. How bad is it when a person can walk around not knowing they're influenced by dark entities? How bad is it they don't see the damage they inflict on other people? How bad is that? You know what that's called? That's a portion of a delusion. When God said he would give them over to a strong delusion that they would believe a lie, there are people right now that are hurting other people. And the person that's hurting other people, they cannot see it that way. They've been blinded to what's really happening. They're operating out of a different sphere, and they do not know what they're doing now to them. They're being 100% honest and truthful in what they're doing, but they're going around hurting other people. It just doesn't happen to anybody, folks. That comes from leaning too far into your own understanding. See, if you lean all the way to your own understanding, there's another word for that. It's called pride. Pride makes you uphold your own arguments. Pride makes you stand tall and beat the other person into submission verbally. Now we know what God said. God said he resists the proud. He resists them. This thing, these influences are rising so heavy. You know what is interfering with the collective knowledge that we have? The body of Christ has a collective knowledge that the world couldn't possibly have. Number one, because God said he would make it that way. He'd reveal to his body a great many things. But then you have some people who choose to follow their own path. It's really bad and it's getting worse. Take note of it so that you can still function and operate. But we have to be wise to see this. We don't point them out as soon as we see them. So there he is. You see that, everybody? That you, That's not what you do. Because you'd be pointing all day. But you must learn to function. Even with those folks in your midst, you must learn to function. You can't fight everybody around you. That's not what you're here to do. If you can understand that small portion, you'll do well. ISIS, those folks, are incredibly intelligent. They have done much more than, you know what, senators are scared right now. How many know this? Senators are actually scared, they're frightened. They're frightened because they know that they know what these guys are doing. They don't publicize everything that's happening. Josh, let's clarify, you know, people, that's not a false statement, but uh, a lot of people say that ISIS is, is trained by the CIA. Let me explain something to you. Uh, the Special Force, the CIA, and a great many organizations do actually train troops for specific uses, just like Israel. Israel has their intelligence operations, which also trains troops. Once they get the training, um, you know, you can't rule a person's mind. So they actually did train them, hoping that they would keep democracy with them and go out and function. It just so happens they turn. They began to follow another spirit. And so now they have the training from our special operations forces. And, that's, and so, yes, a great many of them were trained by the CIA. Not all of them. Most were recruited. But you have your top uh, ISIS commanders, I guess you would call them that, that have been very well trained by Navy SEALs and special forces and things of that nature. That's why they are, and, and then they began to consume the other forces in Iraq that we trained, so they had good intelligence on where all the vehicles and everything else were. One of the stories they don't share is that, that the equipment left behind, the equipment left behind was actually equipment that, some of that equipment has been there for a long time. But most of the equipment was left for the Iraq army. 
And we still had advisors in that area, but everything just blew up in our face. Democracy didn't work or anything else. Now they built up momentum. You see, ISIS has been around for about seven or eight years. Seven or eight years it's been around. Nobody took note of it because it wasn't a big organization. Al-Qaeda was in everybody's minds. Now they have, mili they're trained in military vehicles that we have. Of course, they don't have all the gadgets on them. Even in 1991, they had underground caves full of U.S. military equipment, uniforms. When the coalition forces got, see, we've been feeding the Middle East for a long time with military equipment, a very long time. That began during the Iraq-Iran wars. That was a long time ago. They've been stockpiling. Stockpiling, I, I mean, when I say stockpiles, I mean stockpiles. They could actually clothe millions of troops. All that stuff was underground. In 1991, when the EOD began uh, venturing down on those tunnels to blow them in place, to determine if they had uh, chemical agents in those places, that's when they noticed that's when they noticed the large underground hangars. They look like hangars, and the aircraft can actually take off from underground straight into the air. That was in 1991, fully stocked and everything else. We didn't blow them then. Obviously, you're seeing it now. And materials are still floating through the Middle East. Why? Because we're so smart, we sell our military uniforms publicly. And then you have people in the service who will buy military uniforms and ship them over there. Folks, the problem is much bigger than you think. You see, our military, they know for a fact that in our military there are operatives, Islamic operatives in our military. They just can't catch them when they want to. How bad is that? They're in the military. They are in the military. A lot of things are going overseas. Obviously, these folks have high positions in logistics because they're moving quite a bit and they know how to shuffle the numbers. It's really bad, it's the worst thing you think. That's why I said at the onset when ISIS was being made public and by that dream I had in February, I knew this one was not going away. This one will likely build. It's far worse than people think. But again, people listen to the media and the media is saying, oh, don't worry about it. They can't do anything. You know what, that's fine until the first chemical attack happens. Do you think they'll tell you about a chemical attack that happens overseas? No, they will not. But if it happens in the United States, it's an unavoidable subject. Now everyone's in a panic. Now everybody has to answer for something. Everybody in the White House will have to answer for something. Listen to me, folks. They're positioning right now to answer those questions. You think they're just going to answer them on the fly? No. Have you ever noticed, after every incident that happens, how well-versed, the governments are, as though they rehearsed the response. It's almost like a calculated move. What if they are getting everything prepared now for something that's very bad? You see, they've told you ISIS is no big deal. That's what they've told you. It's a toss-up. They could do something, could not. The first thing that happens in America, they will blame it on ISIS, period. They're not going to blame it on Russia. They're not going to blame it on Iran. They're going to blame it on ISIS. They're not going to blame it on Al-Qaeda. This essentially exempts all other terrorist organizations in the world. It exempts all other nations in the world because everybody in the United States public will look directly at ISIS and say, emptying a finger at one group despite, if anything happens in the U.S., all they have to do is blame it on ISIS. That's it. That's all they have to do. And they have your backing automatically. Things are happening, taking place. In America, America's not very secure. It isn't. You know, I'm a fairly compassionate individual, right? Very compassionate. But it's obvious, not to get political, it's obvious they want people to come into the United States. Regardless of who they are, they want people to come into the United States. But the problem is not the people coming into the United States the problem is, why do they continue to permit this to happen? What is the end game to that? What is the end game? All the while, they're doing something. They're very busy folks. They're not doing anything that you could see. But there are a lot of preparations taking place that you can't see because they're very busy, extremely busy. Stories have come and gone. 
went away. All the scandals were there. They went away. Have you ever noticed that the scandals that happened in the White House are now gone, effectively gone? No one's talking about them. What happened to them? What happened to the IRS deal? What happened with all the scandals? They just vanished. You know, there's a rule of thumb. It's what they don't say you should look into. It's what they're not talking about anymore. You may want to contemplate something else, a greater priority. It's on everybody's mind. Obviously, everybody agrees to it also. Though they cannot say exactly what they want to say, there's an urgency in the voices of senators. It's not politics as usual anymore. There is a type urgency. And now, the public is not paying attention. And you know when something really happens? Well, nobody expects it to. Things will always take people by surprise because they do not expect them to happen. When they let stories go, stop talking about them, that's where your danger will likely come from. The ones talking about space, I can be 100% sure danger's coming from space. The clock is ticking. Nothing they can do about it. And again, this is where you have to stand up in your face because there's nothing they can do about anything in space, any large objects coming here, let alone an entire debris field coming here. And it's coming. It didn't just stop, turn around and go back. We didn't alter our course in the, in the uh, galaxy enough to avoid it. We were going to pass right through, through a big cluster of stuff. Biblically, that's going to happen also. Biblically. You know what? It's during those times in the Bible. And the Lord said it was true. Blood, fire, and pillars of smoke. Well, we know what those pillars of smoke are, don't we? I don't know it sounds like volcanic eruptions fire from the heavens. The blood, that substance. Or it could be war. But we know that blood and fire and ice will be hurled toward the earth. And it happened in Egypt. Everybody forgets it already happened before in Egypt. God did that same thing in Egypt. Things are happening. Things are coming. Now, this is why we have to be sober. This is why we can't have fear. This is why we need to stand up. Because all your problems of today are nothing compared. You know what, have you ever noticed that uh, you can feel really bad, right? You can feel really bad in a day. You can feel just terrible, right? You feel terrible, you don't feel like doing anything. All of a sudden, a child or, or a child you know or, or somebody you know has an emergency. I mean, a real emergency. And your heart, gets, they, they, your heart starts jumping. All of a sudden, you forgot that you feel bad. You're on your feet and you're attempting to find out what's wrong with this child. Is the child going to live? Is the child what? What's going on? Because you have no information. Now, all of a sudden, you just forgot about you feeling terrible. Right? You forgot about it. No longer exists. Your attention is on that child. It's going to happen like that to us, too. We have many things that we think about throughout the course of our days. I want you to ask yourself a question. Are they even worth thinking about? Do they have anything to do with the gospel of Jesus Christ and your walk in Him. Do they have anything to do with that? Are you worrying or thinking or contemplating about things that you just simply can't change? Rule number one, if you can't immediately do something about it, it's not your burden to carry. It's not yours to carry. If you happen to see M-Rats going down the street, what can you do about it but inform those people you need to inform? That's when you need to be sober. Do you realize how many people are going to jump to a thousand conclusions per second when they see the streets being monitored? Some people will say, we're under martial law. Some people will say, see, I was right. Here it is. Some people will make up wild theories. Some people will be so paranoid. They will lock themselves in their homes. And if so, somebody so much as just rings a doorbell, they're going to shoot the doorbell themselves. Some people will be paranoid. That's not good. It's good to be sober. It's good to be sober because you need to think on your feet. People will rely on you. They will. A long time on the Hagmans, everybody had asked me a question. I was telling them about the U.S. being split into five portions in the U.S. I told them about an unexpected war. Everybody said when. And I told Doug, this happens and it will coincide with the heavens. There will be an event in the heavens. Everything will coincide in once. That's when it happens. There's no timetable. But you see, you have to understand the mind of your enemy. They want to maximize, according to their religion and their belief, 
and what they have set in their hearts to do. They want to maximize on it, and it's heralded by an event in space. As part of their belief, it's heralded by something in space. That's when they really strike. I tried to attempt to convey that. But you see, back then, this was, what, three years ago? Back then, it was hard because nobody knew about ISIS. Nobody knew about those type things. Now that you have ISIS rising, now that people are beginning to see just how dangerous they can be, how immoral they can be, how violent they can be, now they're beginning to take notice. And according to the Bible, we know that a system will rise that will consume the world. In the Bible, Antichrist, Antichrist, the spirit of Antichrist, when it was said that there are many Antichrists that, that are out there already, and then they became worse, they are directly against Jesus Christ. It's a movement directly against Jesus Christ. It's not just one entity, several. Listen, science, number one, is against Jesus Christ, is against creation, is against prophecy. Science is. ISIS in particular is against indirectly denying that Jesus is the Son of God. They deny this. The Islamic religion denies that Jesus is the Son of God. Anybody who denies that Jesus is the Son of God, listen to me, and came in the flesh, is an antichrist. They have to deny Jesus is the Son of God, the only begotten Son who came in the flesh, who died on the cross. They deny it. That, that qualifies them to be antichrist. Now, to be against creation and to be against prophecy and to be against all that, is only the spirit of Antichrist. But the Antichrist will deny Jesus is the Son of God. Science does not deny Jesus is the Son of God. They just don't listen to it. You understand what I'm saying? This will come from an entity, a movement, who denies Jesus is the Son of God. And from estimates and what's happening in the chatter, ISIS is spreading faster than anyone could have imagined. It's spreading. Get ready. See, there's a part of prophecy that's sweet. Yes, I'm getting the understanding. But there's another part that's bitter when it actually takes root. See, it's bitter when things begin to happen. It's sweet to feel confident that you're prepared for something. It is bitter to have to walk through. It is bitter to have to walk through. That's why you have to prepare yourselves now, not be drunk in your own words, drinking of somebody else's wine. Be sober in your mind. Accept the words of our Lord and Savior who said these times were coming as prophecy. Tell us the declarations of God himself concerning these end times. We know that an antichrist is coming. And then when all these folks get everything set up, guess what? When the real antichrist stands up, he will begin to worship a God his fathers knew not. The Muslims don't know who he's going to worship. The Christians don't know who he's going to worship. He's going to change the whole thing. And that's the unconventional part that people deny. Because they're trying to make the end times comfortable for themselves. Listen, it's not comfortable. Even God himself said, only a fool desires the day of the Lord. He was talking to his own people when he said, what good is in it for you? There's nothing good in the day of the Lord for anybody. Now, of course, the day of the Lord is his wrath. He said that too in the book of Ezekiel. And his judgments will be poured out on the earth in his wrath. And nothing will subdue his wrath at that time. But that's made for those who just absolutely deny him. But even before his wrath pours out, everything's going to change on the face of the earth. Everything is. You see, we have to get through a time before his wrath ever gets here. Many people get that confused now saying, well, this is his wrath. Well, okay, so... The people who were just harmed in World War I and the Crusades before that, that was his wrath? Or is that just mankind? The Lord told us there will be wars. There will be rumors of wars. There will be earthquakes and floods in diverse places. They will kill some of us. We see that in the Middle East. They're killing Christians. Not the numbers you would think because they're trying to scare Christians. Some of those people they reported as being Christians were not actually Christians. But the key word there, there will be wars. There's going to be a great war. We know through observations that the earth, many cities will likely be caught on fire through meteor showers 
They don't tell you about the ones in the 1500s, the 1200s, 1100s, the 1800s. They don't tell you about any of that stuff. We see the potential of what's going to happen. Famines, droughts, volcanism. It's a season that people have forgotten about. And it's coming again. Just like we have the four seasons. Well, there's a longer season. A season that likely takes place every two or three thousand years. Then outside of that, there's another season. A season that's six or seven times longer. Civilizations were destroyed a long time ago from a massive meteor shower. And we're going through the same thing again. Except the only difference between that time and this time is that this is it. During this season, that will be it. This will be the last time. The last time. It's not going to happen again. Because the Lord himself is coming this time. This is going to be it. It cannot be compared to the history of the past because there is never, never, there was never, the Bible explains, never a time like it before, to this day or will be in the future. It's one of a kind deal. A one of a kind deal to me from what I'm reading means that everything will begin to happen at one time. Everything in the past will begin to happen at once. People will be out of their minds and we're going to have to deal with the Nephilim also. We're already dealing with spirits and they're with these shows, ghost hunters and all these other things. What they're doing is they're making people curious. Those things are seductive. And so when all these things begin to happen at once, the Bible says, that generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. The generation that sees these things will not pass until all the prophecies are fulfilled. It'll happen in this, all of the end time prophecies will happen in the space of one generation. Now is the first time that we have global coverage of everything. They didn't have it before. They did not have global coverage before. We do now. And this generation can surely see everything around the globe. They surely have an understanding of all the political events that are taking place. They can, we, we, are, we get captivated by stories that are not even in our own nation. This is a global community. So everybody can know the same information. Now we have eyes to see it, ears to hear it, and through the aid of technology, this generation can witness everything at one time. Even We can even witness in real time things in space. Knowledge is traveling to and fro. Knowledge has increased. Men are flying in steel birds. You put all these prophecies together and it points to us. We're seeing it happen, but there's a characteristic of the people who will live in that time. The Lord himself said, if he had not cut that time short, no flesh would have been saved. We know it's going to be crucial. But you're a very special individual to even be alive in this generation, whether you're in the... If you could be in your 60s, you're still very special, much needed. It's not an accident that you're in this generation. Even if you're a young person, you could be 14 listening to this, you're a special person. You're special people. Don't let Satan rob you of your contribution to your brothers and sisters in Christ. Don't let that spirit of offense enter your homes. Get rid of that spirit of offense. Get rid of that attacking spirit. I hear so many people talking about demonology and things of that nature, and these same people are the ones that are attacking everybody else. That makes no sense. And this is, hey, this is happening a lot. Get rid of those spirits so you can actually be a helping hand to your brothers and sisters. Not only will we deal with ISIS, we're going to have to deal with discoveries that are going to shake the foundations of a person's faith if they are not rooted in Jesus Christ in truth. There are discoveries that can just shake a man's soul. There are findings that can make a person question everything. you got to be ready for this stuff. And it's not something to take lightly. You're waiting for the right opportunity to present it, and I'm telling you, it is life-altering. But it's good that we can have these chats so that People are prepared for things that they probably would not take seriously or wouldn't think about until it's too late. It's kind of like a, a storm, right? You're in a storm, and uh, five houses down, you see a tree fall in their house, right? But for some reason, even by seeing or knowing that trees fall into people's houses, you automatically say to yourself, well, it's not going to happen here. So you never prep for it. You never take precautions. Then the day it falls into your house, it is devastating. We see things all the time. But you know what the truth is? 
We attempt to prepare, but we're never ready until something actually happens. You know, that's the saying we use in the military. You can prepare for war. You can be prepared for war. Being ready for war is a totally different scenario. Total different scenario. And there's one sure way to be ready, is to absolutely trust in the Father. Because if you don't trust in the Father, I'm telling you, when these things begin to take place, they can be shaking. They can be shaking, they can make you cry. They will make you hope that the yesterdays would come back. And I say more and more people need to be out there getting folks ready for this very violent time coming upon the earth. It is a violent time coming upon the earth. Seductive in nature, very violent. Don't become a part of that violence. Make your mind up now. Don't become part of the violence. There's still laws in operation, such as whatever measure you deal to an individual, I'm paraphrasing, is the measure you're going to be dealt with. Whatever you do to someone, that's going to be done to you. Because we do reap what we sow in the measure we sow it in. You can secure your tomorrows by being merciful today. Imagine ISIS going around, or members with that same mentality. It does not have to be ISIS. They look at you and just totally don't want anything to do with your house or anything else. You know why God's laws are in effect. Tornado can hit the house to your right and to your left, never touch yours. Because the laws of God are always in effect. When he said heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away, his laws are always in effect. Start sowing into your tomorrow because you know this time is coming. If you show mercy at a time of your need, mercy will be shown to you. It's not hard. You just have to get rid of your ways and adopt the ways of our Lord and Savior into your soul. Put on the whole new man, not just the pants of the new man. Put on the whole outfit, the new man. Because there are things that are very challenging, physical things you can see. Things that are going to make the world marvel. When I say marvel, I mean astounded with your jaw hitting the floor, disconnected from your face and just point. It'll far surpass anything that I've been talking about, anything that you've ever heard anybody else talk about. Because seeing something take place is a phenomenon that changes the course of history and the hearts of people just like that. Once you see the impossible happen, you begin to change, you begin to question certain things. You have no choice. But to move, whatever direction you move, you have to move. Be prepped for them. All I can do is tell you that I have a deep concern about people after they see these things for themselves. I can almost guarantee you if this thing is working, a lot of people are going to go to people who have been talking about the strangest things you've ever heard in your life. Because now they're going to want an explanation. When you see the unbelievable, the first thing you do is you go hunt down all the information you can get to understand what you're looking at. You'll probably fill up this chat room and many more like it, trying to determine, oh, this existed. But that too is coming. That too is coming. Hopefully, people are prepped. Hopefully they are. You know what the Lord said? My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. That's what he said, they're destroyed for lack of knowledge. He also told us to be as wise as serpents, as harmless as a dove. I attempted to convey to you all that a serpent knows his environment. They know where everything is. That's why it's difficult. It's difficult to find the serpent because they know where all the nooks and crannies are. They know where the hiding spots are. They know where everything else walks. Now, if you're unaware of your environment, you have no knowledge about your environment, of what actually exists in the world. And you seek to find shelter and it ultimately becomes your doom because we chose not to intake the prophecies. I say, read the prophecies. Don't be so quick to determine your own theory concerning them. Always keep the truth in you. Lots of us are going to have ideas about the prophecies. Never lock yourself into an idea. Those are the Lord's prophecies. How they unfold, he will reveal, sometimes as they happen. He gave those to us so that we could survive it. The Bible has been perpetuated all these years so it could reach you, so those prophecies could reach the ones it's going to apply to. That within itself is a miracle for one book to survive all these years, to be interpreted in so many languages, to reach the last, that generation, 
that needs to understand it. And it did. It almost didn't make it a few times. Satan has been trying to destroy the word for a long time, but he can't do it. Somehow it always survives. That within itself is a miracle. That really is a miracle. There was a time when people had the Bible, but it was in one language, and they had to have an individual to interpret it for them. We have it in all languages. We have access to all the scriptures, even the book of Enoch, which was written for the last generation. That's who that book was written for. At the end of the book of Enoch, it stated this, that when that book is found by those who live in this generation, people will be selling books and telling lies in those books, interpreting God's message to a great many leading them astray. They'll be selling books. Now, first of all, in the time of Enoch, that's just mind-blowing within itself, but it said that it would be a blessing to those who read that book because it will give understanding to things that have long been lost. And it's funny how that book disappeared for a while. All of a sudden it was found again. That wasn't by accident. Because Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and Jesus, and everybody else, it was a common practice for them, and that was one of the books that they did in fact study. I had to go find that out myself. I wanted to know what the prophets were reading and studying and all this, and they were reading the book of Enoch. The book of Enoch was passed down a lot of times and the prophets study that book the disciples study that book Jesus knew about that book and then it went away and it was found again so it's a blessing you know we, we are in that generation but in the first phase of things before we get into the heart of uh, any of the other information I guess you've noticed that my attention has been focused towards being prepared internally in other words being conditioned to a, to a way that you thought maybe it couldn't happen that way. Not making the book of Revelation a conventional book so that we can be comfortable with it, but to be prepared for any scenario. You can be prepared for any scenario so long as your faith and trust is in your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. See, that's the beauty of trusting God. When you trust Him, you also trust that He knows what He's doing. You don't second guess what He's doing. When you trust Him, you do have a peace that surpasses all understanding. You do have a place of rest. Because you're not knocking your head against the wall trying to figure everything out. You'll say, no, the Lord will reveal that to me when I need to know. And He does. All we have to do is give 100% of ourselves. In anything that we do, give 100% of yourselves. You'll find a completeness in that. Trust Him. And about those extra books, I say this. I'll say this, listen. The most notable things that we need to know reside in the Bible that we know, absent the extra text. See, a lot of people read these other texts, but they can't tell you about the gospel of Jesus Christ. I don't know about you, but I want to master my walk in Jesus Christ, right? I want to master my walk, and so I revisit the gospels often to make sure that everything is being applied to my life. You can't apply everything to your life in the Bible in one day. That's not going to happen. It, it happens over time. And then the Lord reveals to you more and more. That's my primary focus, to apply His Word to my life. Now, if I go into these extra texts, and I do like the book of Enoch, but if I go into these extra texts and I don't know about the gospel, what good is that? What good is that? If I can't tell another about the good news of Jesus Christ, what good is that? If they can't see that Jesus resides within me, what good am I? If I'm not an ambassador to the kingdom, what good am I? You see, that would be like me being a master in math books, right? But I'm talking to you guys, and I don't know anything about the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's the root of your foundation in your faith. What good would I be to you? If I knew nothing about it, I wouldn't talk the same, that's for sure. Learning these other texts before you are rooted in the gospel. Is it, you know how many people are going to rush to find out certain things in the Gospels? Because listen, there are going to be things that are going to be proven right. That's when men are going to rush. But before that happens, all the other stuff must be proven false. They're going to know what true evil is. They're going to say, oh my Lord, this was evil in the beginning. This was evil. There's a time in the Bible where everybody knew who God was. Everybody knew the truth. There was a time in Isaiah when men who were guilty and they knew who they were walked with their heads down. They wouldn't even, they wouldn't ask for forgiveness because they had a full understanding of how they had lived their lives. 
they walked in guilt and shame, they would not look up to the Lord and even ask for forgiveness. Those times are coming when the minds of men will be opened up. They're going to be opened up. And when they're opened up, who among us will have our heads down in shame? There's going to be half of humanity that will pull their heads down in shame. The other half is going to look up with a smile and say, that's the Lord. He's the one I waited for. So guess what? I'm ready to endure whatever it is that I need to endure because I have an actual belief and there is an eternity. My hopes are tied to that eternity because I actually believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And so everything I will do, I desire to do things to serve that purpose. Anything else outside of that purpose, I'm finding it is useless. It's going to burn up with the earth. It's a short-term deal. You know, as you get older, you, you realize that you have to take caution in what you invest your time in. I don't want to invest my time in something that's going to burn up, but won't last. I don't want to build a paradise on earth so a tsunami can knock it over. What good is that? That's working in vain. If you know something is going to be destroyed, why work in vain to build it in the first place? No, no. I'm not working like that anymore. That trick of uh, the world and Satan used to work. It doesn't work so good right now. And it won't work. My hopes can't be dashed by anything in this world because my hopes reside outside of this world. Nothing in this world can alter my hopes. Maybe that's why I'm attacked so much by Satan. He attempts. He'll never stop attacking me. I expect him to attack. But even then, I still have authority over certain things. And the rest, the Lord will handle. So I keep going, no matter what. I don't give in to his lies. I don't confer, conform, or confirm things that he will attempt to put on me. Most people get sick, and they confirm their sickness 20 times in one day. Oh, I'm sick. Oh, I feel horrible. Oh, I'm this. They're just releasing words, speaking death into their situation. I haven't been sick in a long time. Probably that's the reason. I, I do not, uh, I don't do that. I don't talk about it when I'm sick. Because if I pray for something, I, I want it to go. I want the prayer to last. I'm not going to talk against my prayer. Lord, heal me from this sore throat. Phone rings. Hey, how do you feel? Oh, my throat is killing me. No, I'm not going to do that. That, that just You avoid your prayer. Don't avoid your prayer. Because we're going to be dealing with a few things. In a lot of cases, we're going to have to keep our mouths closed. Notice also in the last days, perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Covetous, boastful, proud, blasphemy. It takes the grace of God to change us, folks. How can you be saved? If you're not willing to repent, and the Lord Jesus Christ said, Except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. 